Hey everyone, welcome to the very first episode of Railroads Online. Here we have the Ramblin' Railroad, that's the railroad I decided to name it, and this is the very first episode on this channel and of this game. I debated for a while of starting all over again, but I have about 45 hours of work into this railroad currently, and... I decided that uh, maybe I should start filming some of it and posting it to YouTube. Hopefully some of you will see some of this and get some ideas. Now as we look around uh, my railroad here, the Ramblin' Railroad, you might recognize a couple of features. Some building placements and some ideas for track placements and stuff that you might have seen from other YouTubers. And that's because I got the ideas and the knowledge from those YouTubers. So, the other thing you might notice is that this, road, this uh, locomotive is not the starting locomotive. What I did uh, is I started a game I then went into here and I went to see how much this cost and it's $2,900. This is the starting locomotive. It's called the Betsy. It's a porter. They call it Betsy. This, I cannot stand this, uh, that bell's ringing, this locomotive. So I sold by demolishing my, my Betsy and then cheating in $2,900. Then I used that plus with the money that I got. I think I cheated in like $3,000 or something like that. And I bought this guy. This is the Porter Tier 2. And uh, basically, since there is no um, buying and or there's no selling back of cars and locomotives and that sort of thing, I simply cheated in the cheated in the money. Now, that was the last time I actually cheated uh, because I do want to be as realistic as possible in my railroad, and I don't like uh, cheaters. But I cannot stand that first Betsy. It's way too powerful. This one's actually nerfed a little bit, and it has a little bit of extra space for wood. And it's black, which I really like the color. I did name him the Ultra because he is ultra strong for his size. He's still really powerful. And uh, make sure we got some fuel here, some fire. That's uh, probably running a little low. Throw some more in there. We're good on water. I just filled it up. Good on fuel. So what we're going to do today is just take a tour of what we got so far. And uh, then we'll go from there. So like I said, I'm really into realism as much as I can possibly be. Uh, I am a perfectionist. I do like my tracks nice and straight, my curves nice and even. But I also am a student of history. And I do know that this gauge is what's called a narrow gauge. Uh, that the gauge is the distance between this rail and this rail. And this game is three feet, which is narrower than the standard gauge. So being that it's a narrow gauge and we're in the mountains and we're running little small locomotives slowly, uh, they didn't make them perfect. But that didn't mean that they couldn't draw a straight line. So you might see some dips... You might see some kinks, slight kinks. I'm trying to be as realistic as I possibly can within the limitations of the game. This game is awesome. It is a open world uh, sandbox style game. However, it does have its issues. One of the issues that I cannot stand about this game is the fact that we cannot dig into the ground. We can't tunnel through a mountain. We can't even carve into the side of it to make it more even. 
like they would have done in the 1880s. That said, all of my track thus far, none of it is over 3% grade. I do have some steep turns, but I do try to uh, limit the amount of grade that I have. That is subject to change. In reality, I don't think any railroad track goes over 3%. I know some get pretty close, but 3% is pretty steep for a train. Also, I'm not a big fan of giant groundwork and bridges. If uh, there is a gap that we need to span or something like that, I don't use a mound of gravel or a giant wall. I'll put a trestle there. But my trestles don't span from one top of a mountain to the other just for fun. I'll, I will go the long way around trying to follow the, the terrain as best I can. So I do know quite a bit about uh, steam locomotives. I uh, did help restore a actual steam engine. Uh, it was not a train engine. It was actually a 1920s something Stanley Steamer car. But I love steam. I'm not a steampunk or anything like that. I just love the technology. Because I love the technology so much, I am actually, I want to say, fairly knowledgeable about how it works. So a few other things about this game that kind of drive me nuts is a lot of these things and the locomotives themselves are not modeled. One of which is the steamcocks. The steamcocks open up little bitty valves underneath the steam chest. And what this does is when you first open the regulator to start moving, it blows out the water that is condensed inside the steam chest. This is so uh, because water doesn't compress. If it's, the steam chest has got water in it or it's full of water, then you can actually blow your heads off. That's the heads right here. You can blow the heads off the steam chest. So when you're first starting out, you're supposed to open up the steam cocks for a little bit, and then, oh, I got some wood, uh, and then uh, close them as you start to go. The steam cocks are here in the game. There's a right here. I just open them up, and you'll see the steam. Did I open them? There we go. Steam coming out. But it doesn't actually do anything in the game. The other thing is the reverser bar. In this game, full 100% forward and full 100% back is all you ever really need. In reality, you start off at 100% and then you slowly ease it back. And what this does is it limits the amount of opening in the valves at the top of the steam chests here thus saving steam and increasing pressure inside the steam, steam chest, giving you more speed. So you would actually start off 100%, then as you start going, ease it back almost to the neutral position. That's really about all I have uh, an issue with in this game so far. Only because the things are there, but they don't work right in the game. And that blow-off valve... Yeah, that's another thing. If you're running that high of pressure and that's blowing off the top, your fireman needs to be fired. So, anyway, enough talk. Let's uh, let's get going here. Um, we're gonna take a quick tour. I'm gonna enter the vehicle. Uh, this gives us a kind of a a smoother view as you were. Um, I just use the F key to come in and out of it if you're not familiar. If I use the V key when I'm out of it, this is my little railroad guy. They're all the same. Got some different views here. This is a multiplayer game, but I do not play on other people's server and people don't come into mine. 
mostly because my internet connection is garbage. A little stoke our fire here. Then we'll get going here. If you're before we start going, I'm, I do apologize. Uh, this is actually the second or third time I filmed this. I've been having some issues with the screen recording software, and um, so I'm just trying to remember everything I've done in the last couple of videos. So we're here at the freight depot, if you didn't already know. Um, this view, you have all your controls along the bottom. We've got our boiler pressure, that's max. Air brake pressure is not required on this on this train. Our water temperature, that's max. Our water level, that is max. Our fire temperature, that is max. And that is how much fuel or wood we have inside the, uh, the firebox. Our regulator, our reverser, brake, our whistle. Generator does nothing in this locomotive. That is just for power. They use a dynamo generator on these steam locomotives. An air, air compressor. They use a steam to blow a turbine, or a, a piston rather, that compresses air, and that's for brake pressure. Our bell, you can see it's animated. Sanders, this is animated, though I'm not sure how much, I don't think I have any sand in this locomotive. I'm not sure how much it actually helps in this game. And then our cylinder cocks again. I don't have any regulator to show. There we go. So as soon as you exit this view, your regulator will automatically go to zero and your brakes will be applied 100%. So I don't like to use it that much unless I'm just cruising. If I'm getting out because I'm a single player and I have to do switches and shunting and that sort of thing, I... Uh, I'll use this view a lot, and I'll just set the engine to go, jump out, go do what I need to do, come run back, and use the controls. All right, so let's get going here then. Reverse it forward, break off, give it about 40% regulator. We're going to take the slack out of the train here and then just get going. It starts off pretty slow. This is my little shunt yard. I stole this uh, directly from Khan. Uh, he did a kind of tutorial on how to make it. I pretty much put it in the exact same place. I really do like it. Um, we're going pretty fast here. And today we have the uh, 300 series cars. This is for cordwood. Uh, these flat bed cars are for logs and uh, these are for lumbers and planks and stuff. So like I said I have about 45 hours on this game. Uh, I've been doing a lot of grinding. I'm gonna get out of this view. Get the brake going. Get the Get that back on so I can hit this key. And you can see over here on the right hand side, um, my funds there, it's 2,276. That's because I've been really grinding it out uh, and trying to make videos, doing exactly the same thing we're going to do right now, delivering cordwood to the smelter. And I get paid for every bundle that we drop off. Speed up just a little bit here. But coming up here, I have my firewood uh, depot that I deliver wood to. A water tower and a sanding tower. 
This is kind of the loop that I take after bringing stuff here to sell. And I swing by here and I refuel, re get more water and that sort of thing, and head back out and do another big loop. You can see I've been taking firewood from here. I just took a bunch of firewood from here to top up Ultra. Got lots of water. Lots of sand. I don't think I've ever actually taken sand out of there. Slowing down just a little bit here because I do need to jump off and switch this switch coming up. So when we come back, we go directly to the uh, uh, this place. Let me speed up a little bit. I get out of this view, hit the brake, speed up, turn off the brake, speed up just a little bit, and then jump off. So now I'm going to wait here by this switch for the last car, and I want to make sure it is all the way off the switch, no matter what, before I switch the switch. Otherwise, it'll send that car off the rail and sometimes across the map. Ask me how I know. All right, now we run up the engine. And you'll see at these switches, too, I do put little platforms um, underneath them. It just kind of adds to the realism. I don't like things just hanging off in space. Plenty of fuel. We're going to bump it up just a little bit. And you can see this is pretty straight. It's actually a lot of work. This game is really fun, but it's really monotonous as well. Uh, time consuming. Doing the same thing over and over. And you get different results. As far as laying track goes. But it is rewarding to bring a long train down the tracks and it's nice and straight and even. But as you will see in this video, I do have some track that is kind of janky. And that I may or may not actually repair, depending on how much it gets to me. can't bring up the map in this view. That's going to bring up the map to show you where we're going. We're just going to go to the lumber camp and get some cordwood. Nice gentle bend. You'll see here that a bunch of trees are missing. Lays that have this uh, go kind of this way. But when I was designing this Y right here. I ended up moving this entire track over a little bit to give me more room. And I used to have it run off here. You can see kind of cut through that way. But I didn't like it. And uh, ended up just redoing it all. Now this is super steep. It's a pretty steep curve, but I don't derail. I go slow. It's not exactly realistic, but trying to work within the limitations of the game. I could redesign it, but I've spent many hours right here trying to get this just the way I want it. It's not perfect, but it'll work. 
And so far we've been on a 0.0% grade. As soon as we round this bend, we're going to hit a bridge. And just before the bridge, we're going to start climbing 3% up to the logging camp. The physics in this game are actually really good, and uh, we're, we're unloaded right now, so I don't think we'll need to add any more uh, regulator. Sometimes I'll call it gas. Uh, it's like putting your foot on the pedal. Got a little dip there I need to fix. This switch, it doesn't matter. Looks like we're going to go this way. We're going to loop around the logging camp and come up to the other side. Now, if I had more cars and I was loaded, this would be a little bit more of a pull. This little section was kind of a pain in the butt. This is my first attempt. You can hear it lugging down. Right here is where we load up logs. That's lugging a lot. Let me just do a big loop around. We're actually going to slow down, so we need to speed up a little bit, and we're going to slow down. Because some of this track through here is kind of janky. And I don't want to hit it too fast. Because we will derail. Coming through here unloaded is not that big of a deal. Coming through loaded and doing this loop, uh, I have derailed. Uh, I had a kind of a kink in the rail, and I think I fixed it. I smoothed it out. But I still just kind of go a little slower. I moved a lot of trees. I redesigned this loop a few times trying to just keep it as smooth as possible. And again, this was my first loop. It was a learning experience. All right, we're going to come off the regulator completely. This used to kind of ease and go right next to these platforms, but I had to move it over because I was too close to the platforms. I was actually dropping the bundles off the side of the, tr uh, the car. And I haven't smoothed that back out yet. We're going to start slowing down here. Come to a stop. We need to load up cordwood. Um, this doesn't cost anything, and it's always at max. Just come up to these little cranes, click it, it picks it up, swings it around, and places it on the car. Goes back around and clicks. And You can do two at a time if you get lined up right. I'm fairly certain that in the 1800s, when a train pulled up to a loading dock like this, the engineer wasn't the one to load the train. I'm sure they had workers. And that's something I'd like to see added to this game. Maybe the ability to load it yourself if you're broke, but the ability to hire a work, or work crew to load the train for you because this gets monotonous 
quickly. Also, I have seen some people on YouTube struggle with understanding what goes into the cars and how much goes into the cars. And later that becomes very important because you supply the, the places with materials. And if you overload a car, then you lose materials, thus costing you money. The way to figure out, you just come up close to the car and you can see up in the upper right hand corner, we're at 7 of 8 freight. This engineer is the most athletic engineer ever as well. To see what the cars haul, you come in here. And you can see that this one is log and steel pipe, lumber, wrought iron, rail and beam, cord, cord wood, and oil barrel. We're getting oil barrels. Or, er, well, we're getting cord wood. Got two more to go in here. That one's full. All right, so I'll get this uh, I'll get this train loaded, and I'll be right back. All right, this one's got one more to go, and it'll be full. It's going to go right there. That one just finished. And we are full. Now before I forget, and it would not be the first time, I need to switch this switch. So we're going to come off of this, this side. These are those little platforms I was talking about, I like to do. All right. Check our fire, make sure we got plenty of fire. We should. Uh, well, we're going to put some in it. All right. It's going to basically turn the brake off here. We're going to start rolling because we're actually on a little bit of a slope right here. And this is 3%. So we're going to be trucking down this in no time. give it a little bit of break. 30% break ought to do. I do like realism, but, you know, I don't want to be blowing the horn all the damn time every time I move. I know some people get, like, that's not very realistic if you're not blowing the horn. Well, oh well. I like to blow it every once in a while. I think it sounds pretty cool, but... I don't, uh, I don't have all the codes memorized. I used to, but not, not so much anymore. Yeah, we're going to go, whoop, no break, no reg, kind of coasting. We do need to flip a switch up here. This first one. I'm actually going to give it just a little bit of break. Oh, come on. And run. Run! And I'll probably come to a stop before he even gets here. That's all right. I'm 
derailed too many times because I forgot about the switches. Yeah, it stopped. It's probably a little too much break. Slow this down to like ah uh, seventeen. That'll work. And that's kind of what I was talking about. Like I'll set the train, and then take off running because this other switch at the top of the Y, bottom of the Y, whatever. This one over here. Uh, I'm not sure which way it's pointing. It is correct. I did have a little bit of foresight there. Let's wait for the train to come back. This is a sawmill where we bring logs and it produces uh, lumber and beams. That's what I've been grinding on the most of, bringing logs here, making beams and lumber and taking them back to the uh, freight depot for sale. I do have a loop around it, obviously. That this first switch kind of goes this way, loops around, comes here. This switch is for this Y, there's another switch over here. It's for this Y that goes to the smelter. Knowing that the smelter was there and wanting to move along, I decided to connect it, try and get there. I do need to bring a bunch more logs here and keep making lumber products. We'll do that in a future video, I'm sure. Or not, maybe I'll do it off screen. Here we're going to see some janky track. This was a. Uh, a little bit of a challenge for me because again I don't like tall groundwork and this little cross piece right here is a trick that we use to make straight track and I left it here uh, why I left it here is um, beyond me and every time I pass over it I tell myself I'm gonna stop and delete it then I tell myself I'll do it on the next trip I do use a little bit of wall to connect the bridge to the uh, gravel groundwork. I think that looks better and kind of like an anchor. This game could benefit from using uh, surveying tools to better find a route. I do like this bridge right here. This bridge is pretty cool. It kind of spans this little gorge. This is a very beautiful game very big, very mountainous, much like a region that I actually live in. I think that's pretty cool. You see I go through this little saddle right here, this little split in these two hills. Right about here, we're actually going to get off the regulator altogether. Because right here, you can see again, it's kind of janky. It dips down pretty suddenly. It goes to 3% all the way down to the smelter. 
There's a little bit of a flat spot. But it's not very big. So we're going to start coming down this. And we're going to set a little bit of brake so we can pick up some speed. This is kind of where it gets a little unrealistic for me. Give us a break. 22% be enough. Because again, I don't like these big bridges and that sort of thing. That just kind of goes over the top of trees and, and that sort of thing. It just doesn't look right to me. But the game does have limitations. That's where we're going right here. This is the smelter. We do have a little bit of jankiness here at the bottom of this hill, or this uh, bridge right here. You'll see it. I have a strange dip in the track, I'll point out. Not sure how it actually formed because the, the groundwork was all level. I think it's probably from a cross piece. This is where it flattens out, so I'm actually going to get off the brake. And keep our speed up. Now, right here, you can see this dip. Right here. I don't know where that came from. I just saw it earlier today. That's so weird. Alright, we're going to get back on the brakes a little bit. Keep heading down this hill. See that my fuel is out. Fire temperature is dropping. The temperature is still up, so it's keeping my boiler pressure up, which is good. But I do need to get out of this view and put more wood in the fire relatively soon. But we're almost at our destination, so I'm not going to be too concerned about it. We got plenty of boiler pressure, we can still move. come to the bottom of this little valley here across this little bridge I like using these little bridge I, I did the wall here I just thought it looked better than the regular groundwork this is kind of just a depression so I bridged it I get off the brake now here it, it levels out it flattens out it's not perfect it's got a lot of work that it needs but it's it's good enough for me now and maybe my OCD will kick in and I'll need to fix a bunch of things but for now it is what it is here I'm gonna probably put a uh, another rail yard definitely need to have a water tower here and a firewood depot uh, just because right now this is my furthest point, and it's going to be kind of a hub for getting to the uh, coal mine and the iron mine. And here's the smelter. I did chop back all the trees. I figured that a smelter uses fire, and fire is being hot. It causes forest fires so I didn't want to have any trees near it. This takes iron ore and uh, cordwood. And as you can see we're good on cordwood. I, uh, like I said I've done this trip a few times now bringing in cordwood here just for the fun of it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and stop. Break. What we need to do here, one, two, three, I can miscount, one, two, three, 
we need to set this brake and pull that pin. What we need to do here, because these platforms are offset, you can't just drive through, is I can fit three of these cordwood cars backed up here. And I put this little bit of uh, concrete wall groundwork right in the right spot to where the back wheels hit it gently. And I can unload three cars at once. We need to do the first three first. First, we need to build our fire back up. Oops. Get it rolling here. We'll unload these three cars and we'll hook up to those those last three cars and back them on. I can't think of a better way of doing this. If you know of a better way of doing it, go ahead and put it in the comments. Run! Brake, reverser, regulator, brake off. Now you can use just the reverser without using the brake, and you'll continue to slide forward and your wheels will be spinning backwards, which is something that they actually did. They actually used the reversers, and they still do, uh, as a kind of an engine brake, but um, I just, it's easy enough to grab the brake. I need to get into this view so I can see a little better. We are hauling butt. We need to slow down. So there is slack in this train, so you have to keep in mind that the longer your train, the more uh, slack you have to take up when starting off. And when braking, it's going to have a kind of a delayed reaction. And I'm just watching this last little bit right here. And as it hits, bam. And that was actually kind of hard. But I can now unload three cars easily. And the way you do that is just come up here, left mouse button, drag, and it unloads. And it stacks up here, which I think is actually pretty cool that it does that. So Now we can overfill it. In fact, uh, four more of these uh, will overfill it. We'll be at 100. So for now, I'm just going to leave it the way it is because we need to get iron ore in a bad way. As soon as we get some iron ore, probably from the iron mine, it'll start making... What does it make again? I forget. On this side. Rails and... That's rails and raw iron. So if you look at our map here, we were, I was pointing with the arrow, uh, at the freight depot, we went to the logging cap, camp, we went to the sawmill, and now we're at the smelter. We kind of went through that way along this ridge. So... I have been to the iron ore mine, and I did start making a some groundwork coming back. It's kind of how I do it. I get to my destination and figure out how to get back to my existing track. So far, that's worked out well for me once I've kind of figured that out. But I didn't make it very far. 
before I decided to stop and actually make this video. Well, the first of three videos. Uh, and the, <laughs> the first two, like I said, uh, it wasn't recording right and I wasn't happy with it. So I had to redo everything. So there it is. Episode 1 is now complete. Thank you for watching. In the next episode, we are going to continue laying the groundwork from the iron mine to the smelter so we can get this iron ore. We're going to continue to improve the track and uh, make some money so that we can buy more cars and bigger engines. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.